Hey and welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these cool water droplets by using geometry nodes in Blender. And this is version 2, so if you haven't watched version 1, go and watch it to give me some support. So let's continue with the tutorial. I'm using Blender 4.5 on a MacBook Pro with M1 chip and 16 RAM. So in this video, I'm going to use my all-time favorite soda can model, but you can use your own model to set your water droplet on that too. But if you want to use my soda can model, you can now download that for free. Link in the description. So let's start with setting up the blend file by deleting some default stuffs. But before we do that, I wanted to say here in the corner, you can see my shortcut and what key I press if you get lost or just want to know. So first press A to select all and then press X to delete. So now I will show you how to download the soda can model. So click on the link in my description for the free soda can model and then type down zero as the price. And there you go. And now I will show you how to import that model to your blend file. So click on file and then click on the append. And now locate where you save the file you just downloaded from my Gumroad. And then double click on it and click on object. And then find your soda can model and click on append again. And now you can see we have import the soda can model into our blend file. And then press one on your numpad to go to the front view. And if you don't have any numpad, don't worry. I will now show you how to enable numpad for laptops. So press command plus the comma key to go to the blender preferences and then click on input and then check the emulate numpad. So now let's modeling the water droplets. So first select the soda can and then press H to hide it in the viewport for now. So we have a clean space for modeling the water droplets. And now press shift plus A to add a mesh and then click on cube to add the cube to the viewport. And then go to the modifiers tab right over here and then add a subdivision surface modifier and then change the render to one. And then hold your mouse over the subdivision surface and then press control plus A to apply the modifier to the cube. And then press the tab button to go to edit mode. And this is the tab button right over the caps lock. And then press option plus Z for Mac users to turn on the X-ray mode and make sure this little symbol turns blue. And now box select the bottom half of the droplet by dragging over it and then press S plus Z plus zero to flat down the surface. And then press G plus Z plus 0 0.57 to move that part up on the Z axis. And then select the top part of the droplet and press G plus Z plus minus 0 0.28 to move that part down. And then hit the tab button again to go back to object mode. And now press F2 to rename it. And for Mac users like me, press FN and then F2 and rename it to droplet. And then press seven on your numpad to go to the top view and then press shift plus D to duplicate the droplet and then press G plus X to just move it a little bit to the right. And now rename this droplet to droplet two and then hit the tab button to go to edit mode and then press O to turn on the proportional editing and make sure this symbol turns blue and then select this vertex and press G plus Y plus 0 0.3 to move it on the Y axis and then press option plus Z again to turn off the X-ray and then tab back to object mode again. And now select the first droplet and press shift plus D again to duplicate and then press G plus X to move it to the right and then rename it to droplet three and then tab into edit mode and select this vertex and then press G and move it up to the left and then select this middle vertex and then press G and move it to the left. And last, select this vertex and press G and move it up to the left, just like this. And now, tab back to object mode and select the first droplet again. And then press shift plus D to duplicate and make the last droplet. And now press G plus X to move it to the right. And then rename it to droplet four. And then tab into edit mode and select this middle right vertex and press G to move it to the left. And then select the middle left vertex and then press G and move it to the right and now tab back to object mode and then select all four droplets and then press M to make a collection and then rename it to droplets. And then last drag the droplet collection into our main collection. Now hide the droplets collection and then unhide the soda can and then press one on your numpad to go to the front view. And now let's move to the fun stuff and do the geometry nodes. So here on the geometry nodes tab, press the new button to create a new geometry and rename the geometry to water droplets V2. And now press shift plus A to add join geometry node and place it between the input and the output. 
and then add a distribute points on faces node and place between input and the join geometry. And now you can see our soda can kind of disappear, but don't worry. Just plug back the input into the join geometry and now we can see our soda can again. And now change from random to Poisson disk and then change the distance min to 0.015. And now we want to add our droplets to the soda can. So to do that, first add an instance on points node and then place it after the distribute points on faces node. And now drag the droplet collection into our geometry node setup and then plug the instance into the instance. So don't panic if your water droplets looks weird. We are going to fix that by checking some few boxes. So first start with checking the separate children, reset children, and then pick instance. And now the only problem we have is that our water droplets is too big and rotated the wrong way. So to fix that, plug the rotation from the distribute node into the rotation on the instance node. So now to fix the scale of the droplets, add a random value node and then plug the value into the scale. So. First change the min to 0.008 and then change the max to 0.02. And now it looks much better than before. We just need to change the density to add some more droplets. So I changed the density to 450, but you can change it so it matches your model. And I almost forgot to mention, you need to switch from original to relative on the collection info node. Okay, so now we have created some small droplets. So let's create the bigger droplets. So box select all the node we have added and then press G to move the nodes up here. It will make more sense later on. And then press Shift plus D to duplicate. And now plug the input into the mesh on the new distribute node. I like to add another join geometry node, so let's set up that. So first plug the new join geometry into the old one and then plug the two droplets nodes into the first join geometry and then leave the input into the second geometry. And I know you don't see much difference right now, so let's change the seed on the big droplets to a 1. And we want the bigger droplet to be less than the smaller one, so change the density to a 20. And we also want the droplet to be bigger than the smaller one, so change the min to 0.02 and then change the max to an 0.09 and last change the distance to 0.07. So if we zoom in on our droplets, we can see that they are not smooth at all. So to fix that, we are going to add some few nodes after the first join geometry node. So first add an set shade smooth node and place it right here. And then you will see that our droplets gets a little bit smoother but is still sharp. So to fix that problem, add a subdivision surface node and place it right here. And you will see our droplets turns round and smooth. So to add some materials to our droplets, add a set material node and place it right here. And right now we don't have any material for the droplet. So let's create the water droplets material. Okay, so first let's unhide the droplet collection and then select the first droplet. And then go to the material tab over here. And now click on new to create a new material. And then rename it to droplet or whatever you want to and then change the color to full white and then change the roughness to zero and the IOR to 1.33 and now unfold the transmission and change the weight to one. And now you can hide the droplet collection again. And then select the soda can again and go to the geometry nodes and then change the material to the droplet material we just created. And I know we don't see anything right now, so press Z to switch between the different shading modes and click on the render mode. So I'm rendering in cycles, but if you want to render in EV, you can skip this part. So now let's set up the render settings. So first change the render engine to cycles. And if you have a GPU, go and change to that for a better rendering. And then change the max samples for the viewport to 64. I also like to turn on the denoise in the viewport for a better and smoother look. So before we continue with the geometry, I like to add some material to the soda can, just a basic silver metallic material. So let's set up the silver material for the soda can. So go to the material tab over here and then click on new and then rename the material to silver and then change the color value to 0.7 and then change the metallic all the way up to a one. And last, change the roughness to 0.09. Now we have created a basic silver material. And when we zoom in on the droplets, we can see the big droplets overlapping the small droplets. And we don't want that. So let's go back to the geometry nodes and fixing that problem by adding a delete geometry node and place it after the small droplet instances. And now change from point to instance on the delete geometry node. And don't worry for the small droplets. They will be back soon after we have added some few nodes. 
and from the instances on the big droplets, drag the little green dot out and add a Realize Instance node, and then drag the green dot again, but this time from the Realize Instance node and add a Geometry Proximity node. And I'm just going to speed up this part where I'm doing some space for our nodes. And from the Distances dot, drag that R and add a Compare node with the Less Than on it. And then plug the result into the selection on the Delete Geometry node. And like you see, nothing special happened. So to fix that change, the B to 0.01, and now you can see we have delete some of the small droplets. And now let's organize the nodes a little bit so we know what the nodes do. So select the small droplets nodes and then press F to create a frame and then rename it to small droplets. And then do the same for the no overlapping nodes and the big droplets nodes and then for the general nodes. And I just did a frame for the output nodes, but that's not very necessary if you don't want to. And here are all nodes that we have so far. And also, I forget to tell you that I changed the subdivision level to 2 instead of a 1. And now I'm going to be a little bit rude, but if you want to see the animate part, go and be a YouTube member on level 2 to see the video and all my other YouTube-only member videos. So let's continue with this tutorial and set up the nodes into the modifiers so we can easier control the droplets. And now press N to show the sidebar and then press plus to add in panel and then rename it to general. And now drag from the empty dot on the group input and plug it into the water droplet and then plug from the same dot into the big water droplets too. And then drag the collection into the general panel and then rename it to water droplets and then drag from another empty dot into the seed on the small droplets and then plug from the same dot into the big droplet too. And then drag the seed into the general panel and then rename it to seed with caps. And now drag from the level dot and add a group input node and then drag the level into the general panel too and then rename it to subdivide. And then from the shade smooth dot add another group input and then drag that into the general panel and then rename it to shade smooth with caps. And I forget to tell you that you can change the structure type from auto to single, just to clean things up. And then last, from the material dot, add another group input, and then drag that into the general panel, and then rename it to material, with caps. And now for the big droplets, let's add another panel, and rename it to big droplets. And then, from the density max, drag the dot out, and add a group input node. And then drag the density max into the big droplets panel, and then rename it to density and then drag from the distance min dot and add another group input and then drag that into the big droplets panel too and then rename it to distance and then drag from the max dot on the random value and add another group input and then drag that into the big droplets panel too and then rename it to scale and then scroll down to the structure type and change the structure type to single for this one too and then last drag from the seed dot on the random value and add another group input and then drag that into the big droplets panel too and then rename it to seed with caps, and then change the structure type to single for this one too. And then last, do the same thing for the small droplets. And I'm just going to speed up this process, but I will see you when you are done. So here, you can see we have created an easier way to control the droplets. First, we can change the collection of the droplets if we want to. Then we can change the seed for both the big and small droplets. We can change the subdivision and the shade smooth. And last, we can change the material for the droplets if we want to. And then we can change the amount of the big and the small droplets, and then change the distance between them. We can also change scale of the droplets, and last, change the seed for both the big and small droplets separate. And here is my result. Thank you for watching. And if you do a video with the help of this tutorial, go and upload that on Instagram and tag me at marlin.mpeg4 and feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos.